Hello, I'm Mark Lassoff from Framework Television. I'm really glad you're here. Today, we're gonna to be working on your first HTML project. I've got a good one for you. We're gonna be creating a checkout form that would be used on an e-commerce site. Let's take a look. So you can see the form right here. And we've got a number of different areas where the user can place information. So we have this part of the form here where they enter their first name, last name, email address, and phone number. There's also a place to install a coupon code here, an apply coupon button, and then we have two payment options, $9.99 today, then $9.99 monthly, or $99.99 today and $99.99 per year. Notice the change in the format of these as I click both of these radio buttons. Outline turns green. Also notice the order summary down here shifts from $9.99 to $99.99. We have a place for the user to enter their credit card number, the expiration date, and what's called the CVC. That's the little number on the back. We've got a credit card image, our order summary, and a join now button. On the right hand side of the form is a little summary of what they're ordering, the Everything 80s Gold membership. Now you should realize this is a non-functional form in that when you click the join now button, nothing happens. We haven't wired it up to an e-commerce site or database or any of that. This is simply the front end HTML CSS for styling, and JavaScript to make the interactivity work. So we're only using the front end technologies and mainly the HTML and CSS. So let's start taking a look at the HTML code that makes this work. So as you might know, HTML is essentially the scaffolding. It presents us with a way of putting all the content into our document. So I'm gonna leave the document open on the left-hand side, and we'll have our code, excuse me, the document open on the right-hand side, and we'll have our code open on the left-hand side. So this way we can refer to the items in the actual form as we go through them. Notice, by the way, the form kind of nicely com gets compact if it was on a mobile device. All right, and everything, of course, here still works. So let's start at the very top. The form itself is divided into different divisions. And the very top is just this logo here, which is actually the logo for a framework television, framework technically speaking. So that's the very first thing we see in the form. We also have this statement here, you're seconds away from accessing everything, your everything 80s membership. And then we have the box with the form in it itself. Now in the code, we actually have to do some setup before we start putting our content in. So let's take a look line by line. First, we've got our HTML doc type, and then we've got our HTML statement. Every HTML document begins and ends with HTML. There you can see the end on line 85, and the beginning there on line two after our document type definition. So line one is a document type definition, simply says, hey, this is HTML that we're going to be coding in. Line two is our HTML tag, and then we have the head section of the document. The head section of the document is the part of the document that actually is not displayed here on the right-hand side. The head section of the document includes identification information and links to different style sheets. So here in the head, we have a meta tag that's simply informational, indicating that we're using the UTF-8 character set. We have our document title. Now the document title is important if you want your page to be indexed by Google, because that's the first thing that Google reads to determine what your document is about. Some say it's the actually the primary term that Google uses to index your page. 
The title's also used if someone bookmarks your page, and it's used here in the tab in the actual browser window. We then have a link to our style sheet. The style sheet is called sales.css, I have it right here, and this contains the styles or the look of every element in our document. So for example, summary button, which is this guy down here, the join now button, has a background color of green, as you can see, text color of white, its width is 90% of the column, it's got a seven pixel padding around the text, a border radius of five pixels, that gives it the roundness, and a font size of 110% of normal, or 1.1M. So these are all the styles. We'll go over these two, but we wanna finish going over the HTML first. We then have a link to what looks like Google, and this is actually something called Google Fonts. If you've never been to Google Fonts, it's a great resource for getting fonts that aren't ordinarily displayed as part of a web document. You have a number of fonts here to choose from. There's close to a thousand. And when you choose a font, let's say we chose Lobster, it's gonna give you the code that you'll insert into your document for that font. So that's this line right here. We actually chose a different font, but you can see it on line seven. I've inserted that line into our document for our sales page. The font we used is called Source Sans Pro, and we want it in the 200 and 600 width, which is just how wide the individual letters are. All right, and that's our head. And again, the head doesn't contain much that the user sees. Really, the only thing the user sees is this title here in the tab. We then get to the body part of our document. Now, the body contains pretty much everything that's displayed in the browser window. It's where you're going to spend most of your time working on your HTML project. So if we take a look at the body, it starts on line 10 and the body ends on line 84, so most of the document. And the body starts with a header element. So that starts on line 11 and ends on line 14. And if you look carefully, the header element just contains this header in the top of the document itself. We've got our framework logo and then our your seconds away message. So here's the line producing the logo, your image tag, and the source, that's the file that the logo's in, it's called logo.jpg, and then a class called logo. Now, when you see class, that's linking up with the CSS. There's a class somewhere in here that matches up with the class name we have in our document. So, here there's a class called logo, and somewhere in the sales page there's a class called logo, which I just used to shrink the logo down to this 100 pixel width. And then you can see an H1 heading one tag, and you're seconds away from accessing your Everything 80s membership. So you can see that code right there, or the result of that code right there. And that's our entire header. We then get to the form, and the form is everything else in our document. Now, we've gone ahead and given the form an ID, right, ID form, and the tag it's in is called a div. So let me explain. A div is a logical division. It's a way to artificially divide your document into parts or sections. So I've used a div called here container to contain the entire document. So that container div starts on line 10. It actually ends on line 82. It's a good idea to have your entire document in a container. Now after the container div, right, which starts, uh, let's see here, we have our header element, and then we get into the form, and that contains the whole part of the form. Now the form is divided into a left section over here, and further down, a right section. And that's my way of dividing up the left-hand column and the right-hand column. 
So essentially what you often end up with is a structure of a hierarchy of divs with one div inside another. So if we thought about this carefully, we've got the container div, the form div, the left div, the right div here. So we have a hierarchy of divs. The left and right div are how we have these columns here in the form itself on the left and right hand side. Okay, so now that we have our columns, we're in the left section. The left section is divided into a contact div, which contains the contact information right here, name, email, and phone. A coupon div that contains the coupon code, form uh, field, and the apply coupon button. We have a payment div, which contains the two payment options here. We have a div for credit card info, starting on line 57, enter your credit card information. So that's this div with the card number, month and year and CVC fields. Now inside CC info, we actually have a card image div, so another layer of the hierarchy. And in that, we've got the card's image. Finally, we have our summary at the very bottom of the left-hand side. So there's our summary, which contains the order summary, the total, and our button inside a div called button space. The right side is just a div with the image, 80s.jpg, right there. Our heading three, everything's 80s gold membership, and the text membership in everything 80s that you see right here. So the right side's very, very simple. Then we've closed our right side div, we've closed the form div, and we've closed the container div. It's real important that when you have a hierarchy like this, that your divs are nested correctly. What that means is you're closing them in the opposite order that you open them. This way they make a nice nest. So one element is completely inside another. All right, so we've looked at the divs that structure this. So now let's take a look at what's inside each one. Let's start with the div requesting contact information. So here you can see the content. Enter your contact information, which is right here in this H2. And then we ask for, in an input type text, first name. I'm using placeholders here instead of labels to save space. So you can see the result of the placeholder is displayed, we'll go ahead and refresh this, here in the form field until the user types something. So there's first name, Here's last name, then email address, and then phone number. So we have all four of our contact fields right here. Now notice the type for first name and last name is text. That makes complete sense. The type for email address is email, and the type for telephone number is TEL right there. These types create different types of form fields, but you might be wondering, these look and act exactly the same. But the reason we differentiate text types from email and telephone is simply because when someone is using a mobile device, it'll display an optimized keyboard for entering the email address or telephone number. So for the email address, the at sign is displayed. For the telephone number, you have the uh, numerical keypad that looks like a telephone keypad. That makes it easier for the user to enter data on a mobile device. If we had all of these as text, it would just display the standard keyboard. All right, so the next section is our coupon section. That's pretty straightforward. We use text for the coupon code, and then we have a button to apply the coupon, which if we hooked it up would apply some type of discount if the coupon was correct right here. Payment options. So if we look carefully at the payment options section, it's essentially these two larger rounded rectangles. The first one has right here, 
We call this the class pay option and the ID 999 for the price. It has a left-hand side, which contains a radio button. And then it has a payment info section where the payment info is. And then you've got a right-hand side with the 999 that you can see over here. So what we essentially have here is a div that surrounds the whole section, right? So that's outlined in green right now. You then have a left-hand side that's got the radio button and this text, and a right-hand side that's got this 999 right here. Now this left-hand side is further separated into a div that has the radio button and a div that has the payment info. So again, divs within divs within divs. It's really what you need to do if you wanna have fine control over your layout. In a little bit, I'll show you what this looks like without the CSS and you'll be really shocked how much different it looks without any styling, what the default styles do here. All right, so the second one is built the same way except we have 99.99. So again, we have our left-hand side, right, which starts on 44 and ends on 52. That's got a section for the radio button and a section for the text info. So radio button in its own div, text info. And then it's further separated where we have this 99.99 here on the right-hand side, and also that darker gray background. All right, so now credit card info. This is the same thing. We have three placeholders. Card number is text. Our type, excuse me, the next one is month, month, year, year for expiration, and then our CVC. So these are text inputs just like you saw in the contact section. Nothing new here. We then have a div inside of the CC info div for the card image right there. And that's simply a graphic. And then finally, we have our order summary with our order summary heading to our paragraph for the total and then an output section that has 999 by default, but that changes when one of these options is clicked. There's JavaScript driving that, that we'll look at at the end of this video. We then have our Join Now button, right? That's the very bottom, our Join Now button. All right, the right-hand side we've already looked at, it's got the image, it's got the heading, it's got the text. The very bottom here, we're attaching our JavaScript, the sales.js. If you want to see that, it's right here. This is all the JavaScript to basically make this little trick here happen. Not going to worry about that too much right now. Back to our HTML. So that's all the HTML. Now in the head, we have this link to the stylesheet sales.css. That's our stylesheet right here. So that's linking all the styles. Now, just for a moment, I'm going to purposely create an error here and save, and let's refresh. So now the style sheet's not attached, and you can see what this looks like by default. It looks like a mess. So the styles are really, really important in creating a look that is pleasing to the user, and in this case, even usable. I think if a user got to this, they'd ignore it because it looks so disorganized and terrible. Let's go ahead and reactivate our style sheet by changing the file name back to sales CSS. And refresh, and that's a relief, it looks good again. So there's a lot of styles used here in order to create this look that is so customized from what you saw before. The main thing is, again, this hierarchy of divs, right? Logical divisions. Each one is styled for the content in it. So let's take a look at the CSS style sheet at this point. So here we go, sales.css.
Perfect. So when I created this, I started by creating all the HTML with no CSS. I laid out all of the elements I wanted in here, the images, the, te the text fields, the um, output field, the headings, the header, all of that was laid out first. Then I went in and did the styles. The only thing I had to keep in mind as far as the look and feel when I was creating the HTML is roughly where each element fell in the final design. And I was working from a wireframe that I created that was just kind of a block outline of where the different elements were. So now we can take a look at the CSS here. And we have the CSS for the container. This is essentially the central container that our document lives in. I chose kind of arbitrarily a width of 60%. We could have just as easily made that 70% and had a slightly wider form. Just depends on your preference. I'm actually going to leave this at 70%. Now remember, this is the whole container and everything in the page is in the container. Margin zero auto is what's keeping our container centered. So you can see here, it stays centered no matter how wide the browser window is. This is the font family we're using by default. Again, this came from Google Fonts, right? This links up to, in the HTML, this link right here. So this imports the font, and this says we're actually going to use this font, Source Sans Pro. Now the form section is below the header. It's what's in this box. And you can see the border, one pixel, solid border, and this color is a very light gray. So you can see here we've got that light gray border going all the way around the form. And then I gave it a very, very slight background color. It's almost impossible to see. And that's on purpose. We could have gone with something heavier, like a darker gray, but I think that looks funny. So we're going to go back to a very, very light gray, F-E, F-E, F-E. Remember with colors, the closer you are to F-F, 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 right, that's pure white, the lighter it is. You can also use the RGB color system and create a red value, green value, and blue value. So if we did that, the color might look like this. Let's say 230, 230, 230. Actually made it a lot darker. This is probably closer to 250. Remember, it's 0 to 255. Let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Overflow auto. Now, this has to do with the layout itself. When you have elements that are in columns using floats, inside another element, this is what makes sure the element goes all the way down to the bottom. If we were to remove this, watch what happens. See how our form retracted up to the top and doesn't go all the way around? So that's why we need that overflow auto. It lets the form go all the way around our actual floated left and right hand columns. The box shadow, there's a very, very slight drop shadow around this. I'll make it more pronounced so you can see it. So now you can actually see the box shadow right there, but I like it really slight. Maybe we'll leave it at two pixels because the way I had it before, you can hardly see it at all. All right, good. Now the header, remember this matches our header HTML, which is right here. And all we did was center the logo and center the text. Text align center. This is the logo class. We set the width to 100 pixels. And I pointed this out before, class equals logo. That links up to the logo class, right? Dot logo, dot means class with 100 pixels. If we didn't have this here, the logo is actually a really big file. That's ridiculous, right? So we've got to put that back. 
So let's refresh now that we've done that. There we go. So our H1, we set a font size of 1M and a color of 888. So if we look for our H1 tag, that's going to be here in the header. You're seconds away from accessing everything, right? So we essentially set the font size for 1M. If you're not familiar with M's, it's actually really easy. Multiply the number by 100 and pretend it's a, pretend it's a percentage. So 1M is 100% of whatever the user's default is. If it was 1.1, it would be 110% of the user's default. 0 0.8, 80% of the user's default. This allows a user with a visual impairment to make the text bigger, but it will still respect the hierarchy of size. So I like using M's. In this case, 1M, that's the user's normal. And we've also made it kind of a darker gray. You can see the result right here. For H2s, we made those a little smaller. These are H2s. We made them a little bit lighter. And we put a 20 pixel margin at the top, which is creating the space between our individual sections. You can see right there. All right, so now we're going to define our left and right hand sides, right? Remember that this box here, that's our left, and then our right just has our product preview. So here we've got a width of 58% on the left, width of 37% on the right. You're probably saying, well, wait a minute, that doesn't add up to 100. You need to leave a little room for padding. So that's why it doesn't add up to 100, because I've added some padding. If you have it added up to 100% and then you have padding, it's going to throw off your design. OK, then we are floating the left. Excuse me, on the left, we have a border. On the right-hand side, one pixel, solid gray. That's this line right here. That's the border on the left. We're floating it to the left, so it goes to the left-hand side, and we're giving a padding of five pixels, separating it from the border. The right-hand side is floated to the right. We've added a padding of 10 pixels to the top. So there we go. So we have the columns very easily floated next to each other. Now, by the way, there's a newer CSS technology called Flexbox. And Flexbox does have an easier way of doing this. But I do recommend learning the old fashioned way with floats before you use Flexbox because there's so much old code out there that doesn't take advantage of Flexbox. You're going to see this. You're going to have to know how to deal with it. So we did this the old fashioned way. Now, if we take a look here, this next selector is for the input fields inside of the contact div the coupon div, and the CC info div. So I'm essentially styling all of these text fields in one shot. So inside here, the font size is 70%. The padding is 3 pixels. The width is 40%. And the margin is 3 pixels. So that's what's giving those the style, and that's for all of the text info boxes. For the contact div, I added a little margin at the bottom because I wanted some extra space. So next, we're styling the coupon button. That's this guy right here, apply coupon. Now, how do I know that's coupon button? Well, let's take a look. So if we go to our coupon div right here, Inside it is a button tag. This is actually a descending selector we have in the CSS, which says go to the coupon div, right? ID right here, pound sign for ID, and then get the button selector, which selects the button. We set the background color to gray, no border around it. Set the background color to gray again, you can get rid of that. Set the color of the text to a darker gray, a five pixel padding, and a three pixel border radius, making the button slightly round. The text doesn't come from the CSS, so you remember the text comes from the HTML right in here, button apply coupon. Now we have our CC info image. So CC info section is right here. 
This is the image, and we're simply setting that image to 200 pixels. This image is also actually much bigger, but it's got a fixed size, so it's not getting bigger as the form gets wider. It's got one size. Notice that the image on the right of the people exercising, that does change with the width of the actual document. We also created some space with a 10 pixel margin. The card image is inside a div called card image, and we align that to the center. That's how we center the actual image here. All right, we've got a class here called full width, which actually I didn't use. And then we've got pay option. So the pay option are these two guys, right? That's the full section that's got the green lines around it. That's a pay option. With 90%, as you can see, it's got a one pixel solid gray border by default, right? The green is put on by the JavaScript dynamically. Border radius of five, giving us the rounded edges. Bottom margin of 10. Height of 46 pixels. And we're vertically aligning stuff to the middle, which actually I don't think, I don't think that's doing anything. Let's turn that out and let's refresh. Yeah, it really isn't doing anything, so we can take that out. That was me trying something that didn't work. Then within the pay options, we've got a left and a right with its own floats. So this is the left side with our radio button and our text. This is the right side with just the pricing. So again, I don't think this is doing anything. I think that's from a test that didn't work. Let's see. Yep. So width of the left side is 70%. It's floated to the left. Width of the right side, 26%, again, giving us some room for some padding. Font size on the right side, 1M. Color gray, background color a darker gray. Floated to the right, text aligned to the center, height 100%, font weight bold. And that's basically what's giving us the gray area around the price all these different selections here and it's going ahead and bolding our text right there and right here because these are applied to both see these are classes so they're applied to both of these pay option areas all right on the right side here right because now we're dealing with the right div image width is 80 percent our paragraph text right here is 80 percent of normal set the margin top to zero to defeat too much margin space that was in there. Our H3 on this side, I wanted it to be green and bold. So color green, font weight bold, again a descending selector, right H3 strong. And then right H3 margin bottom zero pixels. Again, just creating not much space between these two text elements, our H3 and our paragraph here. All right, then I had a class called Note, which gives a font size of 0.7. I applied Note just right here and right here to give us a smaller font size. This applies to the radio button area right here and right here. The radio button area has a width of 10%, floats to the left, padding of two pixels, and a padding here, uh, a padding on the top of seven pixels. That's what's created this right here. So we also have a left and right side here inside the left side of our pay area. Then we have the pay info area. That's just our text here, right? This text and this text, width of 85% floating to the right of the radio button. All right, we have a top header for margin top for five pixels that I applied somewhere, don't remember. And then we've got our summary button. Went over this already, right? Summary button down here at the bottom, right? This is in the summary section. Button tag, descendant selector, background color green, text color white. Width is 90%, padding seven pixels, border radius five pixels, font size 1.1M, just slightly bigger than normal. And then the button is inside a div called button space, which we simply wanted to center the button and I also think this particular line of code isn't doing anything either, so we'll get rid of that. So that's the CSS. Finally, we have a little bit of JavaScript, 
And the JavaScript, I'm not going to explain at length, but it's what's causing the interaction. I'm going to show you again. And that's this, right? Changing the price down here and outlining each of these in green when it's active. So let's take a look at our sales.js, our JavaScript. So what we're doing here is we're getting the different elements from the HTML. Your HTML and your JavaScript don't know anything about each other. So we actually have to, in the JavaScript, physically get the elements we want to apply JavaScript to. So this is getting something with the ID pay option one. That's actually the top one. Pay option two is the bottom one. And we're assigning those local variable names, opt one, opt two. Out is where the price here lives. That changes from $9.99 to $99.99. That section is called out. And then we have the borders for these two sections. So we can access those and turn them green. So essentially then, when the program runs, we change the style for the first one to green. Right? That happens as soon as this runs. It turns the border green right here. And then we listen for a click on each of these radio buttons. So when there's a click, that's when this code runs. So for opt one, when it's clicked, the code I've just highlighted will run. For two, this code will run. So when opt two is clicked, we change the out to 99.99 right there. We change the style for border one to gray, this one up here, and we change the style for border two to green. We do the opposite when I click up here on opt one. We change the out to 9.99. We set the border style for border one to green and border two for gray, right? Because when you change one, you have to change the other. Just like that. We also make the border, green border, just slightly thicker at two pixels. All right, so there is your project. We've gone over the HTML, we've gone over the CSS, and we've gone over the JavaScript. You can go ahead and download all the code and put it together yourself. Then I recommend trying to make some modifications so you can make this form into your own. Try, for example, changing colors, changing the text, adding features or taking them away. That's exactly how you're going to learn. Hey, I'm Mark Lassoff for Framework Television. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any feedback about this video, please put it in the comments. I'll also be monitoring for questions as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.